Good evening, or good morning class. <laughs> My name is Pam Turner. I will be the moderator for this morning's lecture. And welcome to another lecture presented by the Tampa class. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1958. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the president of our school, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in, whoa, <laughs> in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize Himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plain as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plain? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, oh my gosh, I'm going to kill myself, <laughs> a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure 
and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The ten primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, both practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. We'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Darlene Webster and a no musical selection and the um, scripture will be read by Dr. Miguel Sufana which is John the third chapter. I'll write that down. Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll just take a moment. Now, heart to mind, you just ask Yahweh if you could please just have mercy upon us. At the end of this age, this age is over, and to just give, give thanks to Him for what He has already revealed unto us. And we pray that our minds and our hearts are still and receptive. To, to um, Yahweh, to, through his son Yahshua the Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, class. Good morning. I'll be reading John, the third chapter from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Traina of the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That'll be John, the third chapter. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born again? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born from above. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst, te canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. 
Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yahshua answered and said unto him, Art thou a leader of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For Yahweh so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For Yahweh sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yahweh. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that Elohim, that they are wrought through Elohim. After these things came Yahshua and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and immersed. And John was also immersing in Enon near to Salem, because there was much water there, and they came and were immersed, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same immerseth, and all come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing, except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, this my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And that which he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath certified that he is truly of Elohim. For he whom Yahweh hath sent speaketh the words of Yahweh, for Yahweh giveth not the spear by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. That was John the third chapter. Our first speaker will be Dr. Anthony Oliver. Good morning, class. This is a great surprise. Nevertheless, the Yahweh's will be done. And it's hope that uh, you have something to say to me that's encouraging. And we might stand these last days. Because we are at the last days. And that last soul, Yahweh brought in here. And he's given them understanding. It's time to go home. Uh, this school is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry C. Kinley, in the year of 1931. And he said he had a vision and revelation, and he said not to believe it, but make him prove it to your satisfaction. That sounds like a simple explanation, but that's, that's a divine these are divine statements because you can explain the truth to somebody that don't make them see it so what where is your satisfaction coming from 
Is it coming from your intelligence that he's talking about? Or is it coming from Yahweh, his grace and mercy? See, that's what's allowing when he say, make me prove it to you satisfied. Only way you're going to be satisfied is not by your intelligence. It's by Yahshua's grace and mercy what's going to have you satisfied. Let's get uh, John 5, 39, please. John 5 and 39. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. But ye will not come to me, that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye, that ye have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. Let another come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from Elohim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And the Jews marvel, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Yahweh, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a demon. Who goeth about to kill thee? Yahshua answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath Excuse day? Excuse me for a minute. Did that John fast 39? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You passed already. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Sorry. Can you read John five thirty nine again? I'm sorry. Wow. I was waiting to hear. If you search the scriptures and them, you think you have eternal life, and they they testify to me. Read that one more time. I'm sorry. John five and thirty nine. You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. That's the point I was trying to bring out. Yeah. So the Messiah knew that in the scriptures they had circumcisions, ceremonies, baptisms, suppers, sacrifices, Ten Commandments, and other statutes and judgments. And at that time, the Pharisees, they kept all these things. And he said, beginning in Moses, because they, they believed in Moses. See, they really believed in Moses and they believed in Abraham. But the, the thing they didn't realize that all these things were set up for for a temporary time there was not this was not given to man permanently but they didn't see see they didn't understand he was the one that was going to take these things away and give them something new was the one that was talking to them um uh, let's get over there in uh, jeremiah 31 31 please Jeremiah 31 and 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. See, uh, this is the covenant. See, he was walking around with them and these are the things that they was keeping. So when he came to put an end to this, they didn't accept that. They, want, they wanted to hold on to these physical things because let's go back when they received them, Moses. 
And you go back, the, the scriptures was about Yahshua Messiah. And he's and let's go now. This was Yahshua saying the scriptures is about him in John 5 39. This was before Yahshua's death, bear, resurrection. Now let's go what Yahshua said after his death, bear, resurrection. Let's get Luke 24 and 25. This is after he died, buried, and resurrected. And it was two men. This was the third day that he had, Yahshua, when he walked around with them, he preached his own death, bear, resurrection. And um, matter of fact, Peter, who the world has set up Christianity behind, had told at one, can we get that when he said you would not, he told get behind me, uh, Peter, you offense to me. Because Yahshua was preaching that he would die, bear, resurrect. Because this is his purpose. And Peter said that would not happen to you. So, and, Peter, and Yahshua told him, get behind me, Satan. Because Yah, the world didn't, uh, he didn't understand Yahshua got a purpose. And his purpose, well, he had one purpose, to come in, fulfill these laws, let them to the cross, and give us grace. No more works. It's going to be by grace. And that's only going to come by the divine vision revelation that given to the founder. Now it's given to us. So now we don't have to get that. What he said, get behind me. Let's just go back with Yahshua's after his death, bear resurrection. This is the third day. And they was mourning that Yahshua had been crucified. And they said, and they was they remembered that Yahshua had told them he would resurrect on the third day, but they was like, we don't see him. Well, I mean, he told us he would resurrect on the third day, but we don't see him. And a stranger who was Yahshua, who appeared as a stranger was Yahshua Messiah, appeared to these two men that was mourning his death. Let's get that. Now, this is what he said to them on the third day after he resurrected. Luke 24, 24 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. You see that? He's going back to the scriptures and showing them the same thing he talked to them about when he walked around with them. But they didn't understand it. Because they, 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 they could not understand it. It wasn't time for them to understand it. It had to be a death. It had to be a death. It had to be a burial and a resurrection for him. It was his purpose. No man understood Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection until his death, burial, resurrection. You see, that was the purpose that he had to come in, die, be buried, and enter into the hearts of man and they can understand the scriptures so on the day of pentecost they understood the scriptures was about yashua messiah's death burial and resurrection they understood the scriptures was to be fulfilled by him and and he would give them an understanding of that. And how he did that, he went back to Moses. So we go back to Moses, and the same thing has got to happen today. When we go back to Moses, Yahshua himself have to show us that these scriptures was about him. See, and so everything back here, we read about Moses, we read about Abraham, we read about the promise. See, he was that promise. He the one that gave the promise, and he the one that's given the promise. So he told Abraham, before any of this took place back here in Egypt, that Abraham's seeds would be blessed, you see. And that's, this, that, that, that seed, well, he was talking about himself. He is that seed see, that, we're, that, that we are partaking of, that we need to have eternal life. So he gave this promise back here to Abraham and told Abraham that his seed will sojourn and be in bondage before it even happened, before he even had a seed. Because he didn't even have any. He didn't have that seed. He didn't, he didn't have, the seeds he was talking about, Abraham didn't even have yet. That's how Yahshua, Yahweh could predict something before it even happened. He, had, he gave him a promise before he even had a son that was sojourned down here in Egypt. 
And this took place. And his seed did sojourn down to Egypt, and they was in bondage, just like he foretold it to take place. And this, all this was happening for one reason. So this can take place, don't leave it here. And for this can take place in our hearts and minds, you see. So this has to take place first. They go down to Egypt, and they evilly, they was evilly treated by Pharaoh, you see, and in slavery. And he told me it would be they was his seed would be down there 400 to 430 years. And by a mighty hand that he would take them, you see, he foretold all this. This this thing's happening. It's like you picture your best movie. And the creator and that director and that he writes the whole thing out, right? But you haven't seen it yet. That's what happened. He wrote this whole thing out already. This thing is, see, it was wrote, Mo, Moses seen it from beginning to end. How you see something if it wasn't already wrote? If it already happened? How John look back on it before some of the things happen and see it if it ain't already happening? This, this thing a mystery, can, can be a mystery to us, but it's not a mystery to him. So now, Moses was told, you see, because Moses, Yahweh had raised a man up named Moses, you see, and it was a phenomenal thing that Moses would be read, that would be read up down here. All the phenomenal things that you see is about Yahshua, who is the only, the true phenomenal one. All these phenomenal things, see, so this phenomenal thing, while they're in, while they're in captivity, and bondage, one is one is saved out of his bondage, and his name is Moses. You see, so Moses was was born under a death decree because Yahshua was born under a death decree because the scriptures are about Yahshua Messiah where well, he would come in and fulfill. So Moses being born under a death decree, one day his mother, see. She put him in an ark of bulrushes and set him in the flags in the river, but not in the river, but in the flags. So he was stationary, you see. He was placed in a, Yahweh had him placed in a specific place so that Pharaoh's daughter would hear him cry. Mm -hmm. See, she heard him cry. And this is Yahweh's purpose and plan. Because Pharaoh's dad is, a, is the same one he had put out a death decree on the children of Israel, you see. And Yahweh purposed that the same one that put the, the, the death decree out would raise him. Now that's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. See, and this is Yahweh's phenomenal purpose and plan. Yahweh's purpose and plan is phenomenal. You see, it's, the, it's divine. See, because it comes from him. So this divine purpose is, is, is all, is already, the divine purpose already took place here. See, even before he created anything, he just took on the shape and form and now his divine purpose is, is manifested. See, so now what happened, Moses is here and he's raised up as an Egyptian. He's not an Egyptian, but he's raised up as an Egyptian. And Moses was, one of the, he was from the, the same Hebrews that was in bondage. And he knew, Moses knew he was a Hebrew. And he knew his, his brethren was in bondage. And Moses was not content there with all the riches of Pharaoh. Because he was raised as a as a Pharaoh's son. So he had all the riches, but he was not content with that. Because Yahweh had put in his heart the love for his brethren. So at one time, Yah was so Moses was out and he seen his brethren calling among each other, and, Mo and Moses in the seas. And he kills the Egyptian for his brother. And I used to have a problem with that. I said, mean, he'll kill a man, he did the man of God. 
<laughs> and I, and Yahweh said, he didn't kill that man. He defended his brother. See, he defended his brother. You would do the same thing if somebody was trying to kill your brother. So you wouldn't let him kill. You would kill that man before you let him kill your brother. So he had love for his brother, you see. And he, and so, so he buried that Egyptian and said, and Moses actually thought he had got away with that. So the next day he goes out and he sees two Egyptians, I mean two of his brethren quarreling. And Moses in the seats and the, and the brethren that was in the wrong say, Moses, what you going to do, kill me like you killed the Egyptian? Now Moses know the word is out. Now he knows, see, I, I, I've heard that he just didn't kill any Egyptian that he must have killed somebody important. Because he, he was he was raised with Pharaoh as a Pharaoh's son. So it couldn't just been no any Egyptian because he wouldn't have had no problem. It was told that that was Pharaoh's son. So he he had no choice. See, Yahweh will put you in a choice where you don't have a choice. <laughs> See, he couldn't say, well, maybe I'll go back, you know, and work this thing out. Yahweh will put you in a choice where you don't have no choice, you see. So you, ain't, you might think you're making choices down in your life, but you're really not. You, you, that, that, that's, that's a deception, you think you're making choices. You, you think you might have a, making a choice to be here today, but you're not. You didn't make a choice to wake up this morning. You didn't make a choice when you would come to your mother's lawn. You didn't make, we're not making these choices. See, I was making all the choices. We just don't know it. So now Moses don't have a choice. He has to flee the land of Egypt because his life is in jeopardy now. So Moses flees the land of Egypt and he, be, and he becomes a, a, a shepherd. Now Yahweh is working a purpose here because one day while Moses is uh, attending his flock, Yahweh shows him a phenomenal sight, you see. Because Yahweh, remember Yahweh told Abraham that his seed would go in bondage and he also told Abraham that his seed would come out of bondage. So this is, all, this is what's happening. The whole, this whole thing is what's happening now. So, so, so Yahweh, is now he's, delivered, he's, he's, he's communicating with Moses for one reason, to bring them children of Israel out of bondage, just like he said he would do. So now Moses is seeing a phenomenal sight, you see. Yahweh is, Yahweh is getting Moses' attention, see. So Yahweh had Moses' life going according to his purpose the whole time. But now he's gonna get his attention. Let's get that way he got his when he got when Yahweh got Moses' attention. Okay. In the burning bush. Three and I started two. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of a fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush does not burn. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. So he got Moses' attention from, an, uh, from a burning bush that was not being consumed. So Yahweh is dealing directly with Moses in his mind, you see. And he said, Turn, turn aside to see this great, turn aside. Did we read that already? Mm -hmm. read again? Yeah, please. And when Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight, why this bush does not burn? Now Moses is looking at this burning bush, so what is he turning aside? He's turning aside because he's never seen nothing phenomenal like this, you see. So Yahweh is turning, Yahweh is causing Moses to turn aside, you see. He showed Moses something phenomenal, and you that's what make you come back. Believe it or not, Yahweh is showing you something phenomenal, and you you coming back to see this great sight. See, it, 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 it hasn't changed. I don't care how small that thing is or how big it is, he's turned you aside to come back. So Moses turns aside to see this great sight. And now this is what Moses is telling, this is what Yahweh is telling Moses, I want you to go back down here, Moses, 
Now Moses, you gotta realize Moses don't want to go back down here because he knows his life is in jeopardy down here. You see, but so Moses said uh, he came up with excuses. And this is what he do. Uh, he he he's eliminates his excuses. He says, it's, it's, it, "Let's go over there." Where he says, "I I I, I ask you, I, can we get to that? Mm-hmm. I will be what I will to be." Fourteen. And Elohim said unto Moses, "I am Ashaiah." And he said, "Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be have sent me unto you." See, he said. And let's go where he told, gave Moses signs uh, about with a serpent, and he would put and put his hands in his, his bosom. Because Moses, see Moses, man, you can't you can't just tell a man go back down here in his life in jeopardy. He had to give that man some evidence. He had to get that man something to make him make him go down there. He showed Moses some things that Moses knew. This is what no mere no mere man talking to him or no nothing that he never seen he showed him Yahweh was demonstrating his power right here and he he told Moses to throw down the rod pick up the rod you see but when he threw down the rod the rod turned to a snake and Mo, and, and Moses and then Mo, Yahweh had to give him the courage to pick that snake up <laughs> Moses ain't but no snake handler. <laughs> you see? So he had to give him the strength to even go and pick that snake up. And then he gave him some more witnesses and some more signs. He told Moses, now you put your hand in your bosom, Moses. And, and he put his hand in his bosom and it came out a disease of leprosy. Now he said, Moses, now put your hand back in your bosom and, it's, and it came back whole. So now Moses got some confidence. And we're going to need some confidence down here. Because <laughs> that adversary is, 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 is no joke. So he, he goes back down here, you see. And he tells Pharaoh to let my people go. Because Moses, Moses, and he told Moses, I want to go back down here. And Moses came up with other excuses. He said, I can't talk very well. And Yahweh said, well, your brother down here, he can talk pretty good. And he'll do your talking for you. So he gets back down here and he tells Pharaoh, Yahweh said, let my people go. And Pharaoh says, I don't know no Yahweh and I would not let the people go. And Yahweh told Moses, it wasn't going to be, you wouldn't go down there deliver him. He said, he gonna, I'm going to do the delivering. See, Moses is not doing the delivering. Moses is not doing the delivering. He's a front man, you see. Yahweh always got a man he uses. The man is not the one. Dr. Kelly wasn't the one. Yahshua used that man. He was in that man, of course. But Yahweh is running this show, see. And he used whoever he will. So Yahweh tells Moses to go back down here. And, Yah- and then Pharaoh said, I don't know no Yahweh. And neither will I let the people go. And Yahweh said, I, he, he already foretold Moses it wasn't going to happen like that. Because I'm going to deliver the people in his mighty hand. See, Yahweh's hand is so strong, he created his creation just by speaking it in. Mm-hmm. How strong is that? Yeah. You see, he just will. Y'all will will something and it's going to take place. That's how great Yahshua is and Yahweh is through Yahshua Messiah. So now, Pharaoh says, I'm not going to let the matter of fact, when, he, when, Pharaoh, when Moses told Yahweh, when Moses told Pharaoh that Yahweh said let the people go, the burden got harder on them people. It didn't get easier. So it's a possibility you come down and hear this. It might not get easier. Mm. You think it might get easier and it just might not. Because it didn't get easier for them when it was when Yahweh told them it's time to go. The Pharaoh has got harder, got made them work harder, made their bondage more. Do you want that, Anthony? You can get that. Okay. We're in Exodus, and we'll start at 5, and then I'll drop down 5 and 1. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh, that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not Yahweh, neither will I let Israel go. And then when you drop down, Pharaoh says in 5, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day 
the taskmasters of the people and their officers saying, you shall no more give the people straw to make work. As heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. So the, the thing is, he made it harder. So it, it could definitely, you come down to school, it, it might not be no picnic, <laughs> you see. But Yahweh is a never, he's a never felling L, you see. So now, Yahweh have to cause Pharaoh to let his people go by his power and his mighty hand. And he put out 10 devastating plagues on, the, on, on Pharaoh. The first three children of Israel took place of the last seven, only the Egyptians. And the last plague was, was the phenomenal, it was to put out a death decree on both male and beast. You see, the firstborn would die, would you not have the land within them, you see. And 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 in this one, when this was put out, I like when uh, the things are brought out. See, you, you see it right here. This is what he brought out. This has been here. It, it, it's been here all the time, but he brought it out more. That Yahweh was down here telling Moses to tell the children of Israel, you see, to take out this lamb because this was this tenth plague, and this was the. Killed the firstborn of both man and beast, and Yahweh told Moses to tell the children of Israel, and Pharaoh didn't have a clue. See, the world don't have a clue <coughs> of what they need to escape. This death, the, the end of this age, is what this is pointing to. See, they come out of bondage. Only who Yahshua told Moses to tell had a clue on how to escape this death decree. And he told him to tell the children of Israel to take out a lamb. Because his purpose was the lamb of Yahweh would take away the sins of the world. And they, he had to kill them. they had to take the first firstborn uh, the lamb without spots and blemishes because that lamb would come in without spots and blemishes. You see, without sin. And they had to take the blood of this lamb, you see. This is what they called the Passover in the world. Probably going to be celebrating soon Easter, you see. Have no idea what this was truly about. And then they would take the lamb and pierce the lamb in the side. We know that. You know how we know that lamb was pierced in the side? Because this lamb was pierced in the side. That's how we know it. See, that's how we know it. This is what, this is the scriptures that, that they understood after the day of Pentecost. No man could understand this until the day of Pentecost. You know how phenomenal that is? But me and you couldn't notice until that happened. So they had to take that blood of that lamb, strike on the lintel of the door, you see. They had to strike on the left side of the lintel of the door, you see. They had to strike the blood on the right side of the lintel of the door, you see. He was the door. And they had to take the blood from the basin, you see. And that was the four points of blood. This is what allowed them for their firstborn to be saved. And see, our firstborn is not little Anthony coming forth, you see. Our, first, we had, our firstborn is our soul. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be our last, too. Mm -hmm. See, our soul, it doesn't have a, it doesn't, it doesn't, I can't say it have a beginning, isn't it? But it was here before this body was. And that's what Yahweh is looking unto to save. See, he's not saving these bodies. We know that. We don't have to have a vision to see that. These bodies are going down. And we see that every day. But it's our soul that Yahweh is concerned about, you see. And so he told them to take, have that lamb, you see, with roast that lamb, you see, and have that lamb within them to save their firstborn. Which is our soul. Thank you, Joshua. Appreciate it.
our next speaker will be Heather Matara It's hard to go up after him. <laughs> that was uh, that was good. <laughs> I was getting comfortable in my seat. Um, nevertheless, it is an honor and a pleasure to have anything to say about our Heavenly Father Yahweh, as He truly is and actually exists. And um, I definitely enjoyed the testimony of um, Anthony. He went over definitely a lot. And um, wow, he he. He did the job. <laughs> he went to the law and the prophets and wrapped it up with Pentecost. So um, let's see here. Um, let's just, uh, I guess, go to the scripture lesson mm -hmm. and see what I can bring out. I don't know how long I'm going to be up here. Okay. Let's we'll start at John, the third chapter. Yeah. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Yahshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Yahweh. For no man can do these miracles that you do except Yahweh be with him. Mm -hmm. Yahshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. He warns. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Mm -hmm. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Okay. Um, go and get for me, because he says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And... What I was thinking about with that scripture is how, um, you know, we don't understand spirit. When we come down here, we have to be taught what spirit is. And they go over all the time, you know, they say, you know, God is spirit. And, you know, what is spirit? You know, we don't understand that. And in the moderation, I love the moderation because every time we come down here, we have to hear that moderation repeated over and over again, how um, Yahweh is pure spirit. And get for me that definition of pure, please. Yahweh is pure spirit. And it says in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. So that we don't, we can't understand this pure spirit state. So Yahweh had to take on a shape and form within himself as Elohim. And then it says Yahweh later on, just not only just Elohim, he didn't leave it here in the visionary shape and form. He manifested and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah. Now they call it, this is the word or son Elohim. And I look and I, you know, think about that word and it's Elohim, but it's really El, you know, Lord himself down. So you you know you look you look at this word Elohim, it's like Elohim lowered himself down in this physical form as Joshua Messiah so that we can understand something about him and that's the Romans 1 19 and 20 um, so you have that definition of pure definition of pure in the Webster or in the dictionary online is not mixed or adulterated with any other substance or material mm -hmm. so Yahweh is not mixed or adulterated with any other substance or material and Yahweh doesn't need anything outside of himself to create anything else because Yahweh is all in all he's a source substance limits and bounds of everything and it's showing here like on this chart that everything on this chart is within Yahweh you cannot step outside of Yahweh to see Yahweh because Yahweh is it's the whole he's everything he's all in all he is the creation get Romans 1 19 and 20 but keep uh, reading is there any more there um, free of con any contamination free of any contamination untainted mm -hmm. wholesome um, no other necessary elements no other that's what I want no other necessary elements Yahweh didn't need no other necessary anything unnecessary oh unnecessary mm -hmm. To create the creation. 
uh, not perfectly in tune. <laughs> That's uh, when it comes That's to fine. music. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Get Romans 19. Romans 1 and 19. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. Mm -hmm. For Yahweh hath showed it unto them. For the visible things of them from the creation of the world. See, that's that pure spirit state, that invisible things of Yahweh, and it says from the creation of the world. Are Read. Clearly seen, mm -hmm. Being understood by the things that are made. So everything that we look at when we come down to these classes and we look at it on these charts, see, this is your creator. He is showing you through manifestations you know everything that we look at from the proton neutrons you know the the seasons you know even a butterfly how a child is born you know your, your skeletal um structure your makeup you know everything your physical body you know the planets you know how they align everything in the universe that you can think of and and some people have uh, um, a gift to even, you know, breaking things down. Like if you're watching a movie, if you're eating football tonight, you know, it's a Super Bowl. You might see some principles of Romans 119 and 20 showing you something of Yahweh because everything is made of him, of his substance. Keep going. Being understood by the things that are made, mm -hmm. even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. So we are, so when he's showing, when we're coming down here, we're looking at these things and we're looking at, um, you know, these principles or stories of the Bible, it's showing us something about Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah because it's saying that we are without excuse. So um, Anthony got, you know, to the law and the prophets that Luke 24, 25, you know, how he, Yahshua the Messiah, went back and taught them you know, from Moses all the way from the beginning, how everything that they read back there and they was, you know, studying that law, um, get for me John 5, and he talks about um, you believe Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, mm -hmm. and they are they which testify of me. I might maybe drop down. So the scriptures is the is the law and the prophets, right? And Yahshua was saying, um, so you search them, but they are they which testify of him. Uh -huh. I'll drop down. Uh, we'll drop down to 44. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from Yahweh only? Uh -huh. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. And see, even the world, see Christianity out there, they want to continue to keep, they want to try, because they can't do it, to keep these physical ways of worshiping, right? And, you know, to them, this is their salvation, right? But if you believe this and this is your salvation, Yahshua the Messiah is saying, read that again. For had you believe, um, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. I'm at 45. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. Mm -hmm. Even Moses. So Moses is accusing them, <laughs> but they're sticking to this physical way of worshiping. But it says Moses is accusing them. Read. For had you believed Moses. And they still don't believe Moses, even though they're trying to keep it. Keep going. You would have believed me, mm -hmm. for he wrote of me. And not knowing that Moses was the one, <laughs> Moses wrote of Yahshua the Messiah. How did he write of him? Keep going. 47, but if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Mm -hmm. And then I'm into chapter 6. Um, okay, so, and then get for me. I mean, there's maybe, what else did you want? Um, I think I want, what was that, John 5 and 39. Get, is it Isaiah 8 and 20? And then go back to Luke 24 and 25. Sure. I mean, I don't, I don't really, it's nothing new that you can <laughs> yep. talk about. It's, it's the same thing yep. over and over again. It's, re, it's by repetition that we learn these things and we keep going over, mm -hmm. you know, these things because that's how Yahweh set it up. You know, Yahweh re repeats himself. But even, you know, you go back, to, let's just get those scriptures because Moses, he was a witness that how he was repeating himself through repetition, repetition, telling the children of Israel over and over again because just like a child, you can't tell a child something one time and think that they're going to 
listen, but <laughs> you have to keep it pretty to yourself because that's how we learn. Uh-huh. <laughs> keep going. So we're in Isaiah 8 and 20. Mm-hmm. To the law and to the testimony, mm-hmm. if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm-hmm. To the law and to the testimony. Keep going back to Moses. Keep going back to the prophets. You know, it says if anybody speak not according to this word and you know before coming into this teaching you know being raised in the church i thought you know when someone said something about god it was because that person was set up by god you know god or you know lord set them up and then you go to a physical man to learn something about your creator but it's not so because you know the only intercessor is yashua the messiah we don't have to go to a physical man you know to learn something about us because get for me um i know my old place get for me um Worship Yahweh in spirit and in truth, and then get from me what it talks about. Your body is the um, temple. Thank you. First Corinthians, Corinthians. Yeah. Six nineteen. Yeah. yeah. So we're in John four for spirit, Yahweh in spirit. So John four and twenty three. I'll start at. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Because we don't know how to worship Yahweh. We didn't know how to worship Yahweh. We thought that we was worshiping worshiping Him. You know, with our hands and going to church and doing these physical ordinances. And, you know, I was really big on tithing, right? Because that's what they, I was indoctrinated by that. That's what they told us, that you don't get your blessings unless you give 10% of your earnings. So I used to always, you know, thinking I had to give my money to worship the creator when, you know, coming down here and learning that Yahshua Messiah came in because, you know, here it says that he nailed it to the cross. You saw, you see, and now since Yahshua Messiah fulfilled everything that was back there in that law and the prophets and he nailed it to the cross. So why do I have to continue to do it if he nailed it to the cross? It's like it's like calling him a liar saying that he didn't do the job right so now we have to do it we have to you know um uh work up on our salvation we have to try to keep the ten commandments we have to do the the baptism you know people still getting baptized and trying to do circumcision and ceremonies and stuff like that but Yahweh says no this is not how I want to be worshipped and you know it says that in um, John is, did we get that John 4 and 24 and then um, first Corinthians. For, yeah 1 Corinthians well, we're just finishing John 4 and 24 John 4 24 yeah. okay and get 1 Corinthians for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Mm-hmm. Yahweh is spirit. Yahweh is spirit. Mm-hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. So that truth part is, is hard for the world to, um, to understand because, you know, everybody thinks that they have the truth. But if you're not, if, if Yahshua Messiah says that he came in to fulfill and the rest of the world says no, uh we don't we we're, we're not going to do that because it's our tradition you know it's, it's our family's tradition to go to you know church and um wash feet and and, and um, take up the the wafers and the what they do the, the grape juice and all that <laughs> you know, yeah the, the wine and things like that and it's like that's not the truth yeah that's not the truth yashua messiah he said you have to worship in spirit and in truth so the truth is first of all they can't even get to the truth because they don't even have the name right you know you have to get to the root of it you can't say you worshiping yahweh you don't even know his name you know you have to go back to the beginning you know and and that's another thing that you can't explain anything about this teaching to anybody first of all because you have to go back and the foundation of it is knowing first of all who your father is knowing who the messiah is knowing that it was is not jesus christ you know because there is no no letter j and that letter j is only a little over 400 years old so when he says worship in spirit and in truth if you know and you know lord god and jesus christ if you're introducing to this teaching it's telling you that lord is not a name and god is not a name that it is a title you know and that they took those names out and replace they took Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua out and replaced them with a false uh, name or a false God and then you come down and say it's okay 
we 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 don't have to call him by his name. He know who I am. God knows my heart. It's like, yeah, but you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> you don't know the name of the creator. So you can't worship him in spirit and in truth. So Yahweh said that he su he seeks such a speak. Uh, read that part. Read that again. John in, um, in John, John um, four. 4 and yeah. John 4 and 24. Yahweh is spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want me to pick it up at 23? Yeah. But the hour comes and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Now what hour is he talking about? It says the hour is come. It says it now is because see Yahshua the Messiah died, buried, and he resurrected and he poured out his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So therefore we, we have no excuse. We have no excuse not to know who our Father is. And it's going all the way back, you know, looking at these things, looking at... Um, you know, the, the, the teachings of um, uh, going back to Moses, looking at the things that Yahshua Messiah had shown him, because it was Yahshua who brought him up, or that or Elohim who brought him up and showed him in a vision. He told him to write everything that he saw in a book. So everything that we are looking at in the law and the prophets is what Yahshua showed Moses in that vision, shape and form. And so when we go back, we see those principles of how, you know, he is our savior. He is the salvation. He is the one that set everything up. And um, do I have anything else holding? First Corinthians. Yeah, First Corinthians. First Corinthians six nineteen. Mm -hmm. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own? See now, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and see they. they <laughs> Oh my goodness, there's so much to this teaching. Um, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I've been studying this tabernacle pattern. And it's, it's so amazing how everything in your body is pointing to your creator. And it's like you, you never knew that. You didn't know that you was made in the image and likeness of your creator. And... Even down to, you know, the, 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 the cells in the body, you know, um, the way you breathe, uh, just everything is pointing to your body being the temple of the Holy Spirit. And um, go and get, I think it's Acts. Is it Acts 17 and is it 28? 25, yes. Acts 17 and 25. Acts 17, 25. I'm going to start at 24. Mm -hmm. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is ruler of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. dwells not in temples made with hands. So the, the buildings that we see on every corner, they call it God's house. That's the Lord's house, right? You can't curse or swear in the Lord's house. But that's not the Lord's house. That's not God's house. Acts 17 and 25 says that, read that. 25, mm -hmm. neither is worshipped with men's hands. So what are they going down there doing then? If, if the scripture is saying that you can't worship him with your hands, you can't give Yahweh something that he gave you, first of all, <laughs> he's giving you everything that you need, but you, you steady worshiping him with your hands. It doesn't make sense. Keep going. As though he needed anything. Mm -hmm. Seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. So if Yahweh don't need anything from you, who are you giving to? Mm -hmm. uh, those guys. Well, who, how, who, is, who is benefiting off you giving something to your creator for salvation? It's not Yahweh. It's, it's a man, but, you know, it's, 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 it's worthless. It's meaningless. Keep going. 26, and has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth mm -hmm. and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So Yahweh is not worshipped physically and that he doesn't need anything from you and that you are made in the image and likeness of your creator. And how you made an image of likeness to your creator because here you have the tabernacle pattern and it has a most holy place, a holy place in the court round about. And you are made, you are made in three parts. Uh, get first jar. No, it's not first jar. Is it? I don't know where it's at. Um, 
What do you say? Yeah, yeah, there's three that bear. That's um, first John. Okay, yeah, first John. You have a head cavity, chest cavity, and abdominal cavity. And everything is pointing to how you are made in the image and likeness of your, your creator. Now, down here, it was a, you ha it had to be a sacrifice here um, on this altar. And I can't. I'm not good at getting into all of it because I'm still studying this time like a pattern because it's some things that I didn't even know, you know, um, coming into this class, still studying this pattern and how it's so amazing because you look at you look at this tabernacle pattern and you see that okay, yes, I know I have a head cavity, chest cavity, and abdominal cavity, but everything that I eat you know, is, is, is a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I'm sacrificing something that is innocent in order for me to live. And I have to have this sacrifice because if I don't, then I'll die. And then, but then they say, well, how did Yahshua the Messiah, you know, die, bury, and resurrect? Because it's pointing to him because he had to be innocent. And that was a sacrifice. You know, he sacrificed himself, you know, being innocent because we already got that definition of pure um, spirit because that's what he is. He's made of Yahweh substance so this pure spirit and um just like Pilate said that Yahshua had no fault within him he see no fault within him so he was that innocent one that sacrificed himself to you know die shed his blood in order for us to live and we're doing this every single day we wake up every single morning you know hungry you know we have to eat three meals a day you know and it's like why do we have to eat three meals a day because uh get for me first John 5 and 7 First John five and seven. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven. See, it says three. Now, why is it? Why isn't it four? <laughs> that's bearing record in heaven. <laughs> Because it has to go by the pattern. It's the same <laughs> pattern that Yahweh showed Moses up here in that vision. It's always three, no matter what it is. It's not five, it's not six, it's three. It's three that bear record in heaven. Keep going. The Father. Mm -hmm, the Father. The Word. Mm -hmm, the Word. And the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. These three are one. Now, there are three that bear witness in earth. Now, the, the three that's bearing witness in earth, read. The Spirit. Uh-huh, the Spirit. So you're going to see a principle of spirit down here because you know that that spirit is the one that's going to bring you up to see the father see because that spirit Yahshua the Messiah is the one when he poured out his spirit here he's the one after the day of Pentecost then he bring them up to um, you know that understand that understanding they didn't know that before Yahshua Messiah died bear and resurrect on that um, before Pentecost they didn't have no understanding but the spirit when he poured his Holy Spirit out on that day of Pentecost and, and they understood on Luke 24 and um, what is it? Uh, Luke 24 and, and 44. Yeah, the Spirit brought them up. So you see, keep going. The water. Uh-huh, the water and it was by the, the baptism. See, you had to be baptized and you had to have a, a washing here. You had to have a washing here. So it was that Spirit that led them and it had to, it had to be water here because that represented the washing and that water is Yahshua Messiah said, um, you know, out, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Uh-huh, read. And the blood. And the blood. See, and it had to be a principle of blood because blood means the shedding of, a, you know, it, it means death. It represents that death, see. So it had to be a spirit, the water, and the blood. It had to be spirit, water, and blood. Yahshua Messiah had to um, shed his blood. He poured out his spirit. And that water, he had to have that baptism to bring you up. See, keep going. And these three agree in one. So these three agree in one. So it has to be an agreement all the way down from the law and the prophets. No matter what you're looking at, the spirit, the water, and the blood is going to agree. You see, and it's going to be a repetition over and over again when you're talking about, when you're looking at that baby. See, it has to be that spirit. That baby had to take on that spirit. It had to have a show of water. And you had to, you know, um, have that, that blood showing. See, it has to be an agreement because guess what? If that baby didn't have enough water surrounding, it's going to be, it's a problem. Yeah. Something is wrong if that baby didn't have that water. And then guess what? If, if the blood comes out first, but that baby don't come out, it's a problem. If, if you know, um, Thank you.
anything that goes wrong in this if they don't agree if something is off here it's an issue is a problem if you don't if you don't if your body does not break down your food in the right way is a problem mm -hmm. if the children of Israel did not go by that lamb and they had to strike that lamb on those in the four uh, points of that uh, door they did not have that four points of blood on that door it would have been a problem Yahweh said, Yahshua Messiah said that he came to do the Father's will. If he did not die, bury, and resurrect according to the scriptures and do the Father's will, we already know he's going to do it because the Father is in him. He's doing it himself. There would be an issue just like he told Moses when he said when he told him to go and make that tabernacle pattern what did Yahweh say he said now look he told Moses now look that thou make thee this pattern according to what I have shown you and not only Moses and when you go back in um I think it's in Hebrews he, he's repeating the same thing what Moses said Hebrews 8 and 5 and I think it's uh first Colossians is it a 15 they're they're literally repeating the same thing that Moses yes. uh, that Yahweh told Moses look that, that thou made thee according to the pattern that I showed thee and if we don't come down here and if we don't do if we don't go to the law and the prophets and if we don't do it according to that Though that three that's bearing record the father the word of the son is going to be a problem it's going to be a problem for us because we have to go by this pattern because why because Yahweh set it up so Yahweh made it so that it is going to a pattern if you veer off any way any way shape or form it's going to be a problem they died down here whoever didn't have that blood they, when that death angel came and, and, and looked on that door and they, they didn't see that blood you died you know, if, 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 if they didn't believe that Yahweh was going to bring them up out of that land of Egypt and, and bring them into a promised land, if they didn't have that faith, guess what? They died off in that wilderness. You see, and so it's, it's important for us to know that we, it's, a, it's a, um, a prescribed way in order for you to understand these scriptures. So Yahweh has set it up, that prescribed way is going to the law and the prophets, is going to the, the, the death, burial, and resurrection going by the blood, the water, and the spirit. Um, get from me uh, what I have, uh, I think is what, Hebrews? Hebrews, yep. Hebrews 8 and 5. First, get, go, go and get what Yahweh, um, Exodus 25 and 8 and 9, then Exodus um, 40. Let me set it first. I'm sorry. Yep. Exodus, Exodus 25 and 8. Mm -hmm. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Mm -hmm. According to all that I show, show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof. Uh -huh. According to what I showed thee after the tabernacle and all the instruments thereof. See, all the instruments thereof. You're going to make me a sanctuary and I'm going to dwell among you. Okay. Even so shall ye make it. Mm -hmm. 40 and verse. And look. And look now. Look, Moses. That thou make them after their pattern, mm -hmm. which was showed thee in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Now you make it after the pattern that I showed you in the mouth. You don't go no other way. Just like um, Aaron, two sons, didn't they go in and they tried to make their own incense? They didn't do what thus said Yahweh. And did they live? No, they didn't. They died. Because they didn't do it. They, they tried to go their own way. They tried to make their own little incense. And Yahweh said, no, you're not going to make anything like that. You're going you're gonna to die right there on the spot. Um, get for me uh, Hebrews 8 and 5. Yep, Hebrews 8 and 5. Mm -hmm. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. Mm -hmm. As Moses was admonished of Yahweh. Now Moses was admonished of Yahweh. Now now who's 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 um, writing this right now? This is Paul. This is Paul saying. This is Paul talking, right? But he's talking about something that happened back there in the law. Read. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, mm -hmm. as Moses was admonished of Yahweh when he was about to make the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Now he was about to make the tabernacle. Now what is what is Paul's going to say? For see, saith he, see, that, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. Mm -hmm. Six. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. So now he's saying the same thing that Yahweh told Moses back there in the law about that tabernacle pattern and then get, um, Colossians. yep. 
Colossians 1 and 15. Mm -hmm. Who, um, 15. Who is the image of the invisible L? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to pick it up? Yes, please. Okay, so we're going to go up to um, uh, 9. And I'm just trying to show the importance of you know, this pattern, this is nothing to just look over and be, oh, it's just a tabernacle pattern. Yeah, I heard they talk about it all the time. No, this is the most talked about thing in these scriptures is this pattern because you have to know why did Yahweh show Moses this pattern? See, because it's going by that, that first John 5 and 7 is going by that three and that everything in the universe, everything that we see is going by that tabernacle pattern. You're looking at your creator in a visionary shape and form and he's manifested these things all all the way down even here you know in the earth plane showing us something about him so that we can understand who he is okay we're starting at 12 mm -hmm. Colossians 1 and 12 giving thanks unto the father who hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the sons in light mm -hmm. who has delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, mm -hmm. in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 15. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim? He is the image. See, he is the image of the invisible Elohim. Uh huh. The firstborn of every creature. Mm -hmm. For by him were by all him, things. All things were created that are in heaven mm -hmm. and that are in earth, visible and invisible. That's that Romans 1, 19 and 20. See, they're repeating the same thing. See, all of them, they're not veering off. They're not right. going on their own theories, thoughts, and opinions. They're literally repeating the same thing over and over again. It's just different pro prophets, it's different witnesses that are saying the same thing, going right back. You know, when people get tired of, oh, we're going to tired of going back to Moses, but they're literally saying the same thing. Keep going. For by him were all things created that mm -hmm. are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or, de or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Mm -hmm. And so this pattern, you know, it's, it's, it's just not a, a pattern to show that the children of Israel were back here worshiping Yahweh physically. So this pattern is pointing to heavenly things. And it talks about um, in the scripture lesson how if he... If he talks to you about, he about about physical things and you don't understand it, how he's going to talk to you about heavenly things? See, we have to come down here and go through these things, go through these uh, witnesses, go through, you know, the law and the prophets, understand how Yahweh is setting this thing up and so that we can come up to him, that we can look into that most holy place, you know, um, Talking about that 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 veil, you know, here in that tabernacle pattern being written in twain on a, on when Yahshua Messiah died, buried, and when he resurrected. Because when he written in twain, that means we can stand here in the holy place and see right into Yahweh, see right into that most holy place. And so it's just not something for us to just you know glance over and not understand it. This is a witness for us. This is a witness that he has given us to show us about himself, how he died, buried, and resurrected in the out his Holy Spirit and how he is the salvation because everything is going according to that pattern. Um, get for me in that script in the scripture lesson where it talks about if he speak about um, I think we talked about speaking about heavenly things. Mm. Mm. I think is let me see. Um, is there earthly things. Earthly things, I'm sorry. 12. Thanks, Carol. So John 3 and 12. We'll pick it up. Okay, 3 and 12. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Mm -hmm. And no man has ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven see this is a round trip see this whole thing is just a, a round trip see it says no man has ascended unto heaven Read. no man has mm -hmm. ascended up in heaven mm -hmm. but he that came down from heaven even the son of man which is in heaven and as moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up get for me what talks about fleshly things if he i think it's three yeah uh, born of the flesh no 
where it talks about um, if the born of the flesh is flesh. Born yeah, of the yeah. So that's um, five. John three and five. Yahshua. Well, we'll start at four. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can you be? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the same second time into his mother's womb and mm -hmm. be born? Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. See, he's talking about being born of water and that Spirit again. See, he's going right back to that pattern. <laughs> talking about born of water and that Spirit it has to be a baptism. It has to be a re resurrection. See, it has to be a show of blood. It has to be born of water, spirit, and blood. See, keep going. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You must be going born again from a spiritual standpoint, not a physical standpoint. From a spiritual standpoint, you have to be born again. The wind blows where it lists, and you hear not the sound thereof but can't tell whence it comes mm -hmm. and whether it goes. So is everyone that is born in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And get for me Romans 8 and I think when it talks about, let me see. Um, sorry. Get a couple more scriptures and then I'll be done. Romans 8 and... Four, start at four. Romans eight and four. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us mm -hmm. who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. So again, so we have to walk after the spirit, not after the f flesh, not that physical way of worshiping, but that spiritual way of worshiping. See, Yahshua the Messiah, when he was talking, he was always talking about spiritual things. He wasn't talking about physical things, but they didn't understand that. See, that's why when he was talking about being born again, they was asking, can you enter into your mother's womb again? They didn't understand. See, because it wasn't time for them to, to understand saying yet but here um keep going five yes. we're in romans eight five mm -hmm. for they that are after the flesh yes. do mind the things of the flesh mm -hmm. but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit mm -hmm. and then um drop down uh, at 13 13 mm -hmm. for if you live after the flesh you shall die mm -hmm. yes. But, so yeah. with that, so you talking about living after the flesh? See that fleshly way of worshiping, you know, um, <laughs> you thinking that this is your salvation. But the scripture is saying if you live after the flesh, see you you're gonna die because it's not it's not going according to what that said Yahweh. It's not going according to you know how they came up out of the land of Egypt. It's not going according to you know that pattern. See you're gonna die. That is just as simple as that. But keep going. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Mm -hmm. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, mm -hmm. you shall live. Okay, it's through the Spirit, see? It's that Spirit, Yahshua the Messiah. He has to, that Spirit has to be in you. It can't be outside of you. Um, it has to be in you. You shall live. Keep going. 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit mm -hmm. of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. And didn't, didn't Yahweh let the children of Israel out of Egypt? It said, about that spirit let's get that um i think it's in hebrews that uh they said talking about the uh rock that led them or that spirit that led them put put your finger on there and then get that scripture yeah. for me that's that first first corinthians? Ten? Yeah. First, yeah. first corinthians 10 and 1 mm -hmm. moreover brethren i would not that you should be ignorant mm -hmm. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Mm -hmm. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Mm -hmm. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. See, they're talking about spiritual meat. See, they was eating meat down there, but it was physical. But see, that, that physical lamb did not save them. That physical lamb, it, it had to be in them, but it wasn't permanent. It, it wasn't their salvation. But it said they ate that spiritual meat. Uh huh. And four, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Spiritual drink. See, not that, not that uh, wine or fake wine, whatever they give you in the church. <laughs> it wasn't that. They didn't. They you. Then you're not getting crackers and grape juice, you know, for salvation. They're talking about spiritual. You see, mm -hmm. keep going. When they drank of that spiritual rock. Mm -hmm, that spiritual rock. Yahshua Messiah is that rock. 
And that rock was Joshua. Mm -hmm. That rock was Joshua, who led them. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't say, this says follow, but that's incorrect. Uh -huh. who, they, who led them right. out of that um, land of Egypt. And, uh, okay, now go back. Um, uh, you went back in, yeah. um, we're in Romans 8, mm -hmm. and we're down at 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die, but mm -hmm. if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Mm -hmm. For as many as are led by the Spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. See, this this was this was bondage right here. Now, I uh, wish we had that um, Aya Asha Aya chart because that mystery of iniquity, he has chains going around his head representing that bondage, see? And he loves this these physical way of worshiping because that's what that's what he tried to get you hooked on. Hooked on. He's trying to get you hooked on something physical because, see, that mystery of iniquity, he cannot understand spiritual things. See, but it's talking about, you know, you being in bondage. Read that part one more time, please. Please. For you have not received the spirit of bondage mm -hmm. into fear, mm -hmm. but you have received the spirit of adoption. See, he's that, that mystery of Nick was that spirit of bondage. See, Yahweh didn't give you that spirit of fear. Yahshua Messiah didn't give you that. See, keep going. But you have received the spirit of adoption, mm -hmm. whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit mm -hmm. that we are the children of Yahweh. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh. So we're going to receive, see, we're going to be adopted and we're going to receive that spirit. See, even though, you know, we're not physical, we wasn't back there with the Jews. See, we, we, we wasn't invited to the party. We, we invited ourselves. You see what I'm saying? So, but now he has invited us here, down here at the end of this age to be called the children of the sons of Yahweh. And see, and it's through the, the, the preaching of the gospel, it's through, you know, seeing these things repeated over and over again, coming down, hearing Yahshua in these vessels preach and being taught, you know, through the law and the prophets, through, you know, understanding the tabernacle pattern and how you are made in the image and likeness of your creator. So um, it's so much more, and I'm sorry, I can't, I wish I can get some more with this tabernacle, but this teaching is just, it's, it's so much to to understand and go over and, and you can never get bored with it because we just scratching the surface we just scratching the surface you know that chart what it was the daniel chart i'm looking at the chart last week and i it was something on that i'd never seen before i'm like where did that come from you know but then we we look at it all the time and it's like you have to keep looking at these things because it's so much in here that you you'll miss it you know trying to go fast and, and thinking that you know it all you have to go back and, and he said you come unto him as babes we have to come unto the father as babes see and what do babes do they repeat themselves over and over again they ask questions you know mm -hmm. So um, I just want to say thank you for the time and all praise and honor and glory. Go see Yahweh through Yahshua Messiah. Our next speaker will be Dr. Charles Marshall. I was hoping it wasn't going to be me because the job's been done so good. Where are you going to go? <laughs> it's all been covered. Thank you. Uh, let me get something out of my bag here. I got into this the other night. I'm going to get into it a little bit again because it's something Dr. Kinley wanted us to know about. <clears throat> this teaching is the, the only religious, I'll put it like that, teaching that can combine science and theology. Now I was basically, when I was in Christianity, which has been many, many, many moons ago, uh, that, the, that 
religion and science didn't mix mm -hmm. because the scientists were basically teaching uh, evolution and so on and the thing about evolution is they even say they don't say it so much anymore but they but it is the theory of evolution it is not a fact it is a theory it is a concept it is an opinion mm -hmm. but yet it is taught if uh, if uh, these governors want to take and control what's being taught <laughs> maybe they ought to look at that mm. instead of the other mm. garbage that they're trying to you know but I'm not going to get into that because you know <laughs> it's useless <laughs> Dr. Kinley was talking about, this is uh, an article from Coronet. Now, a lot of you people ain't old enough to remember Coronet magazine because it's not been published for many, many moons. But there was a magazine at one time, it was like a Time or something like that. And it was a Coronet magazine. And there was an article in that magazine in December 1949. I was only four years old. <laughs> and Dr. Kinley thought that this was so important, and I'll get into the transcript where he talks about that. I think it's under here, yeah. Now, this is Coronet Magazine, December 1949. And it's Science Proves the Story of Creation. <laughs> now, the transcript that he talks about it, is, this is from the early 1960s. It's the day of Yahweh, also called Spirit, Soul, and Body. Now, I'll read this out of uh, what Dr. Kinley said about it first. Okay, this is on page, uh, I guess it's page two because it's two eyes. So I guess it'd be page two. And uh, it's at the bottom of the page, it's the last paragraph in, the, in, the, in that page, page two. Now he says, now Einstein, Bach, B-O-K -okay is the scientist's name, and Gamal, I guess is how it is, G-A-M-O-W, this is another scientist. After all, they, all their research, they had to fall back on the Genesis account of the creation. After they said from what they discovered why Genesis was the most accurate account of any investigation of the scriptures that they could maybe find out anything about. Mm -hmm. Now that was in December, Coronet Magazine of 1949. Now you can go online, some people have done it, you can go online and you can find the archives and get this article. Okay. I have looked for the magazine in Coronet Magazine, 1949, and all I could find in the used bookstores and places I bought them up in Cincinnati, Columbus, and Springfield. And then I gave them to the students in the class and told them to preserve them and keep them. I wanted to make sure that somebody wherever it was necessary, would find one of those copies of that extraterrestrial analysis of the universe, which is the most modern up to date. This is back in 1949. Yeah. <laughs> this is before a lot of people were born. Just some of us old parts were around. Now since that time there have been some theological opinions expressed but to get down right down to it none of them had made a none of them have 
made a better version of it than did Einstein, Bach, and Guamal. Now, the reason uh, I got this from Peggy Trevison of Syracuse, because about a year or so ago, uh, I was talking to, with her. She was when she was down. Last time she was down here. And I was talking to her, we was getting into time and the creation and so on and so forth. And she told me about this article. Well, she sent it to me a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Sometimes things move slowly, you know how we are. And she sent it to me, and it, it blew my mind. Now then, I'm going to get into just a little bit here. I'm not going to read this whole thing because, you know. But I will, I'm going to read just some portions of it. Now the first paragraph... The universe was born in a manner of minutes, in a singer, single, thunderous act of creation. With this startling announcement, a group of famous scientists have dramatically told the world that their discoveries provide a striking scientific background to the great story in Genesis. Okay. Like I say, you guys could do uh, get this because, and one reason why I wanted to bring this out was because Dr. Kinley said mm -hmm. that he wanted this information to be, to be out here and to be preserved. Mm -hmm. Because I was taught right from the very first that science, when I came to class that is, Yes. that science and the Bible agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. And since I came down here, I have, there's so many articles that I've found and seen that back up what Dr. Kinley's vision said. Mm -hmm. Scientifically! And this is the only organization, like I said, that I know of that can do that. Okay. Two billion years... To the scientists, this means that the earth materials could de not be much older than that, although now then they're saying they can even go back to 4,000, I mean 4 billion years, okay? Here was evidence that if you go back about 2 billion years, maybe a little more, you will come to time zero, emptiness, nothing, a moment where there was no earth and no universe. All right. Now then, I've also got an article. I've got this is uh, Scientific America, and the the whole book in this Scientific America is devoted to a matter of time. It's about time. I've gotten to this a little bit before down here. We do not understand time. We do not even begin to understand what time it is. And even in Yahweh's creation, we don't have an exact time. We don't know when the creation is going to go out. We don't know really what time it is. We have an idea, but we don't have an exact time of time. And, and when you start reading about time, you find out that we don't really understand what time is. <laughs> And the scientists are struggling to understand what time is. And time is because of this creation. Other than that, there is no time. Mm -hmm. So this is very, very interesting. Now this is, uh, it's, it doesn't have a date. It just says display until December 22nd, 2014. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can probably look it up and you can get, you know, the articles out of here. Now, in this magazine here, it talks about how that before time, whatever it was that was before time, and of course, they're not going to give credit to Yahweh. They're not going to give credit to a God. They said that what we say in John 1.1, Get that, please. John 1.1. 1, 1. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to tie these John, all together. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, 
And the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Now this is the very beginning. Genesis is the beginning of the vision of Moses. This is talking about the very beginning of creation. And what we say when we give this account is that Yahweh had to slow himself down in order for us to comprehend him. And we've been saying that, but we really had no, if you will, scientific evidence or anything to back us up other than the fact that we go to and show how the water, the water molecules, you see, in pure spirit has to slow itself down, you see, so they can get to, into the intermediate state and then slows itself down further to come into the concrete state. Now that's the evidence that we've always used. Now the scientists are saying that what caused the creation was that it was moving so fast, Yahweh, hmm. pure spirit, see they don't say that, yeah. was moving so fast that actually what happened is it slowed down. And that was the creation process. There, it slowed down to the point that there was a bang, okay, and it slowed down, and that's where the uh, spirit materialized into this earth, or into the creation. Okay, now we've said that, and I found it right in here where it says the same thing, okay, that the scientists are finding out. Now here's the interesting part I found in this, because they also say in here, that the creation, they always thought that the creation was slowing down. But they said, now they're finding out that the creation is not slowing down, that the creation is starting to speed up. So what does that mean? That means that this will dematerialize and go back into spirit because it was moving fast, slowed down, and now it's going to be moving fast again. Mm -hmm. That's just, we've been teaching this mm -hmm. ever since I came into class and Dr. Kinley had his vision in 1931 or 32, you see. And he's been teaching that all along. Now here comes an article back in 1949 that's backing him up. And we've got sci more scientific evidence even now today to where what we've been saying all this time is true. And I find that, you know, it, to me when I come across these things, I don't know about you, it excites me. Mm -hmm. Because it backs up what we're saying. And what we say down here is we want Proof. Yes. You see, it's not believe. Dr. Kinley, like, like was stated earlier, stated, don't believe me, you don't make me prove it. And your satisfaction is different than my satisfaction. I have been, I'll, I'll just put it to you like this. I have been satisfied that what this man says is true. It's just everything that's being taught and everything I learn after that is just more evidence on top of it. That's all. There is no doubt in my mind that this man had a divine vision and divine revelation. It's been proven to me. But it's just cool to get more and more and more evidence on top of it. Just like you say, going in here into this pattern and understanding this pattern and how it operates. And we can see how it operates in the Bible and we can see how it operates in the earth plane or in the scientific realm. It's just, it's, it's, it's amazing. Now then, let's see. Uh, I'll put it like that, there we go. Uh, like I said, I'm just gonna get into a little bit of this. Uh, the galaxies have indeed come from the same spot in space. And what was more, this hurtling and now distant masses of matter have begun their flight between two and three billion years. Okay, now another place here, it says four. And I think Dr. Kinley even said something someplace, uh, maybe later, <laughs> about four billion years, okay? Uh, okay. 
with all the material, uh, could all the galaxies, all the countless billions upon billions of stars, have been jam-packed into a tiny point in space, perhaps no bigger than our own solar system? The scientists, they're even finding out it was smaller than that <laughs> since this. The scientists concluded that they could have been, but not in the form of stars. With all the materials formed, with all the materials that would make a universe compressed into this minute area, conditions of pressure and heat would have been such that not even matter could have, ex have existed. And then somebody wrote here, Yahweh, pure spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This primordial life stuff of the universe must have been made up of sheer energy. Mm -hmm. Energy. Right. Now, MC squared, you see, spirit materializing into energy or any energy materializing into matter okay blazing with inconceivable power energy so overwhelming that comparison the heart of an atomic bomb is a mere firecracker how long it has been there where it had come from to begin with, the scientists, of course, cannot even imagine. Well, they can't. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's why we're head and shoulders above the world in our understanding, mm -hmm. not as people. Mm -hmm. But we're under, and our understanding is head and shoulders above the world because we can transcend the science and the theology or knowing about Yahweh. And what even they can't understand, of course, this is back in 1949, they understand a little bit more now, but even today, they still don't understand that. And here, a little hillbilly, you know, that didn't like school and rebelled against school can understand these things. You understand? It, it, it's, and it, but that goes to show that the understanding of this teaching has nothing to do with your educational background. Mm -hmm. You can, we've got PhDs in here, mm -hmm. and I can remember when I first came into class, a lot of the original people that came into this class couldn't read or write. Mm -hmm. That's right. But they understood this gospel. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to do with education. It has to do with whether or not Yahweh puts His Spirit within you. Mm -hmm. And it's a testimony to the world. That's why we've got all the different races. That's why we've got all the different backgrounds of people in here. It's to show that Yahweh has the power, you see, to bring you up out of, your, out of our ignorance and the way we think. Because this teaching will change your mind. And this teaching will change your heart. Because we've got evidence right here in these classes. We've got evidence today where you can have an academic knowledge, an academic understanding of this teaching, but Yahweh didn't change your heart and didn't change your mind. And they're out there doing all kinds of stupid things and saying all kinds of things. I, like, I don't even like telling people anymore that I'm in the IDMR. Because if they do research and look at the stupid things that they're saying out here from headquarters, ah, it's on tape. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I tell you, Christianity makes more sense than what they're teaching. <laughs> The scientists, of course, cannot even imagine. They cannot probe behind time zero. The scientists can't. But Yahweh can. And Yahweh did. And we are the recipients of Yahweh giving this gentleman right here, Henry Clifford Kinley, a vision and a revelation. And I'm going to tell you something. When I first heard that this came from a vision and a revelation, I was, uh, I was a little skeptical. Now, I'd been to a few classes before I knew it, so I knew that the information I had was phenomenal, and, and I couldn't refute it. 
But when I heard that, I went, oh no, not another one. And it made me step back just a little bit. And it made me really start thinking about what I had heard. But like I just said before, I know for a fact he did now. Because when you come down here, it's like you were talking about. We repeat, we repeat, we repeat. That's how we learn. That's right. I wish I didn't have to repeat a lot of my mistakes over and over so I could learn, but <laughs> you understand? <laughs> but we do. But it's but I mean that's the way they teach in, in school is repeating over and over and over. And I was told over and over and over not to do things and I still did them, so I mean <laughs> They do not know that at the zero hour there must have been some tremendous stirring in the universal universe egg. It surged within and exploded. No human guesswork could be bold enough to envision the shattering thrust of pure driving energy which, starts, which started the race through space. Not a race of stars or solid pieces of matter, only radiant energy. And as that energy slowed down and gravity started putting it all together and so on and so forth, that's where we get, you know, the, the planets and the stars and all of that stuff. Okay? I'm just, I'm just skipping through paragraphs here. Now comes a tremendous turning point. Next to the explosion itself, the greatest of all in the history of the, of the universe. Up to this point, there had been no atoms, only seething energy consisting of wildly racing neutrons. With today's knowledge of what's going on in the heart of the atom, nuclear scientists are able to figure out what happened next. The neutrons slowed down, just like we teach, giving off parts of their energy charge in the form of tiny packets of energy that we know now as electrons. Somehow these electrons arrange themselves around the neutrons forming electronic envelopes. Here were the first atoms the universe was without form and void. Now we have the building blocks. Yes. 1949. Th that's what blew my mind. Mm -hmm. That back in 1949, right. you see, they knew about this. Mm -hmm. And that's why Dr. Kinley wanted to point it out. Because he wanted to show. One fantastic hour after the cosmic explosion, all of the 92 elements had been formed. In Yahweh's plan and purpose, one hour, you see, one day is a thousand years, a thousand years is one year, one or one day, day. one day, mm -hmm. you see. So how long was that hour? We don't know. They don't know either. They're just, you understand? In one hour, there they were, all the atoms that would make all the galaxies, planets, suns, and all the substances in the earth, even all the living creatures, nothing would be added. And uh, let's see. Having reconstructed the past, the scientists are now looking at the present. This is 49, of course. They have come up with a surprising revelation. Far from being a tired, old, run down, the universe is active, still fresh enough to be in the throngs of creation. In other words, there's still creation going on. There's still planets being formed. There's still stars being formed. They're dying. They're reborn. There's a, if you look at the, at, at the universe, you will see death, burial, resurrection. Death of a star just produces a, a material mm -hmm. and, and new stars will be formed from it. Mm -hmm. It's still fresh enough to be in a theology. It was Bach who first came out with this tremendous fact. And I'll read this. <coughs> Scientists have passed a great milestone in presenting this stirring version of the creation story. 
yet magnificent a scientific a achievement as this cosmic timetable may be, even top scientists must realize that the most profound mystery of all still remains. How did life emerge from the nuclear fluid that became cosmic dust that become the suns and the planets? They don't know, but we do. Now, I just thought that this was interesting. I wanted to bring it out. I got into this the other night on in Zoom, but I wanted to bring it out again simply because of what Dr. Kinley said that this should be, you know, that we should know about these things. Mm -hmm. And like I said, this was 1949. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, you can get all kinds of scientific articles and stuff. This, if you want to really understand something about time, and if you really, and even they don't understand, and they tell you, mm -hmm. this, this, this is good. But it's, it's, it's scientific. I, I, sometimes I have to read it three and four times just to, mm -hmm. you know, just to, just to wrap my little brain around it, you know. So I hope somebody got something out of that. What we're down here to do is to stir your mind and to stir your heart so that you can love Yahweh with all your heart and all your mind. And that's all this is. This isn't about being smart. This isn't about, you know, being anything like that. This is all to give you understanding and proof and knowledge of your Creator so that you can truly love and understand. When you get married, you want to know, mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. everything you can about that person you're going to marry. And hopefully, that will cause you to love that person more. And what we have to do, you see, I have to change. My wife has, has had to change. I'm talking from a physical standpoint. So that you can love each other even more. And that's what we're doing down here. We're getting an intimate knowledge of our Creator so that we can love Him. With that, thank you. <laughs> oh, there you go. Sorry. Do you want some water? You get one. That concludes our Sunday class. Thanks everyone for coming out to study with us. Um, just a quick announcement. There's the upcoming Unity and Yah August 2023 Symposium. And that'll be Thursday, August 3rd to Sunday, August 6th. And Cynthia was kind enough to print out a bunch of these for y'all. <laughs> Sign up. And there's um, ever, everything you need is in this packet. So come up and get one if you want to check that out. We hold classes here every Sunday from 11 to 1. We have our Wednesday Zoom. Let me know if you need information on that to log in. And um, we also have a Friday side study. The everybody should be on that group email to get that information. Let's all please stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Oh, I love this. Oh, I, I usually get to that word. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Today was 60, so I thought I could do it.